Hi guys, in this video we're going to learn how to compute the completion time for every job in a static permutation flow shop. This is very important because later we're gonna try to find good solutions for this kind of problem and in order to know whether a solution is good or not we have to be able to to see how how long we how long it takes to complete each of the jobs and in particular all the jobs so we're going to learn this with a particular example we're, we've got this example where we've got five jobs two machines it's a static permutation flow shop and we're interested in minimizing the the make span the completion time of all the jobs since the problem is static um, the completion time and the flow time of each job are are the same so the data of the problem is the processing time of each job in each machine which is given by this matrix so basically this uh, means that for instance job 2 has to stay at machine 2 for 7 units of time so here we've got all the processing times as we've already seen the number of possible solutions here is n factorial in this case 5 factorial because once we've decided a certain order for the first machine that order will be kept for any subsequent machine and in this particular example an optimal solution is this sequence where we start processing job 4 then 2 5 1 and 3 okay and what we're gonna learn here is to derive this matrix down here which is the matrix that tells us the time at which each job leaves each machine and from this matrix it will be very easy to compute um, C max which would be the maximum of this matrix or F max which is the same or the average flow time which would be the average of the last column in this matrix and so on so we're gonna learn to to compute this uh, matrix with a computer and, and later at programming classes what we will do is to actually implement this algorithm so basically let, let's see how it works we, we're gonna do the Gantt chart and then see the algorithm that is underlined so for this sequence the first job we're gonna process is job 4 and job 4 is going to stay at machine 1 for 0 time units so job 4 will be here and then immediately after it leaves machine 1 which is at time 0 because it's gonna stay there only well 0 time units is going to go to the second machine and there is going to stay for 6 time units and then uh, we will have finished job 4 at, at time 6 as, as you can see job 4 the time it leaves the first machine is at time 0 and the time it leaves the second machine is at time 6 the second job enters machine 1 as soon as job 4 has left which is at time 0 and there it stays for 2 time units and once it leaves machine 1 it goes to machine 2 but machine 2 is not is not free it is processing job number 4 so uh, job number 2 will have to wait until uh, job number 4 has finished in ma machine 2 and then at time 6 it will enter machine 2 and then it will stay there for 7 time units so it will leave at, at time 13 and, and that is what is written here that job 2 will leave machine 1 at time 2 and machine 2 at time 13 the next job uh, we, we've got in the sequence is job number 5 which will enter machine 1 as soon as it is free which is at time 2 when job 2 has finished in machine 1 and then it will stay there for 8 time units 
so it will leave at time 10. Then it will go to machine 2, but again machine 2 is busy, so it will have to wait until job number 2 leaves machine 2 at time 13, and then it will enter machine 2 and it will stay there for 4 time units from time 13 to time 17. So here we've got the time at which job 5 has left each of the machines. Uh, at time 10 it left machine 1 and at time 17 it left machine 2 and so on and so forth. Well, here uh, the last job we have in the sequence, job number 3, is slightly different because once it finished um, in the first machine and went to the second machine. The second machine in this case was free, so then it will, it, it just, it, it was processed and it stayed there for one unit of time. It couldn't go before, obviously, because it hadn't finished at the first machine. Okay, so this is how we would do it in a Gantt chart. What we're gonna do is the general algorithm to do this in a computer. So basically what we want to do is to compute the time at which job J, any job, leaves machine 1. And that time, the time at which job J leaves machine I, is the time at which job J enters machine I plus the time is going to stay there, the processing time of job J at machine I. So let's focus on this term, which is the time at which job J enters machine I. And for a job to enter a machine, two conditions must be fulfilled, right? The first one is that the job must have finished in the previous machine, and that is this term. And the second one is that the machine has to be free has to be available. So the machine, machine I, has to have finished processing the job that was scheduled before job J. And that is this term here. So the time at which job J enters machine I cannot be before the time at which job J leaves the previous machine and cannot be before the time at which machine I is available to process job J. These two conditions must be fulfilled, so the time at which job J enters machine I will be the maximum of these two times. Both the job and the machine have to be available to be processed or to process. So this is the general algorithm, and this is what we're going to have to implement in in MATLAB in the programming classes. There's, there's a couple of issues here. Um, we've got a, a discontinuity, if you like, at the first machine, because here we're looking at the previous machine, and there's no previous machine for the first machine. And there's also a discontinuity for the first job, because there's no job scheduled the first uh, before the first job. But, but these... Um, particular cases, the first machine and the first job, are actually easy, easier to compute than, than this general case and, and you just have to think for a couple of minutes how, how to do it. But just bear in mind that those two cases must be treated somewhat separately. So you can practice this uh, trying to, to solve this, this problem where we've got five jobs, three machines, again a, per a permutation flow shop, which is the kind of problem we're going to focus in in this course, and we're interested in minimizing the completion time of all the jobs. Uh, one optimal solution, you can check it, um, not by hand obviously, but we will be able to check it because in this case, since there are only five jobs, it's it's fairly easy to to look at all the possible sequences, which are 100, 120, right? Five factorial. And this is one optimal solution. The C max for that optimal solution is 41. And we would recommend that you 
try and draw the the scheduling Gantt chart for this sequence. Okay, so keep it up, guys. I'll I'll see you later.